Hi, everyone. Thanks again for being here and checking out a tech tip for uh, you teachers. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about three ways you can use your document camera in virtual school. Uh, and this, I specifically made this video this week because I had three teachers come and ask me questions about uh, videos I've made or um, things that they want to do with their uh, in their conferencing and they're not quite sure how to do it. So we've had these in-person conversations and I thought, hey, why don't I just make a video about it so that I can share it out to everyone? Um, so document cameras, wow. How did we live before document cameras? <laughs> um, I guess we had overhead projectors, but um, document cameras are so versatile and uh, phenomenal and amazing. And there are three, I use it every day in my uh, virtual school life. And um, there are three main things that I do with them. So I'm gonna outline those. The first is I make clips for my lesson videos, like mini lessons um, or other teaching videos. I can make uh, a clip using that camera and then in insert it into the video I'm creating. The second thing I do is sometimes I make a whole screencast clip. So if I want my picture in the corner and also um, showing what I'm doing on the paper or under the document camera, I'll use that. And then the third is I use it with live conferring. Um, so I'll just run through those one, two, three, and then hopefully we'll get in and out of here pretty quick because I know you're all super busy. <laughs> so uh, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna show you is how to make a clip that you can put into a mini lesson video. Um, so I use Photo Booth to take all of my clips with uh, my document camera. Typically when you open Photo Booth, it will open, your default camera is usually your FaceTime camera, which is the one on your um, computer. And so if you have your document camera plugged in and turned on, then when you open this, it should show up here as a camera option. So when you click on that, then here you go. Now you can see under the document camera, you can do a sample of whatever you're putting into your mini lesson video. Um, Oh, I should have recorded that, oops. <laughs> okay, so you take your clip. Okay, so now I'm recording and I have this happening and yay. So now I have that clip. So now I'm recording and I have this happening and yay. So now I can drag and drop that clip into whatever my movie editing software is, whether it be iMovie or currently I'm using WeVideo, more about that later. Um, so making clips to use in your mini lesson videos, that's number one, finished. The second tip that I will give you is uh, if you want to make a video where there's uh, you writing and uh, like a, you in the corner, like a screencast, well, it is a screencast. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna show you how I do that. So I actually use QuickTime for this one, and there's a reason for that. I don't actually record a um, clip through the application, I record a screencast, okay? And when I'm using Photo Booth, the camera uh, records in reverse, and then it like automatically flips it when you watch the video back, if that makes sense. Um, but when you use Qu QuickTime, it records it not reversed. So I open QuickTime, then I want a new movie recording. Um, sometimes it will be your FaceTime camera that comes up first, right? So sometimes if you open a new movie recording, it'll look like this. Ah! So then all you need to do is click this little uh, arrow and switch it over to your document camera, just like we did in um, the other <laughs> photo booth. Okay, so then you can size this up, make it however big you want it. And then when you're ready, you start your screencast. So this will put, um, you can record, when you record your screencast, then you're seeing all these things happening under the document camera, but you can also see um, the teacher in the corner because it's a screencast. Does that kind of make sense? Okay, so then I take my screencast and then I take the screencast clip and I put that in a video or sometimes I just need that one standalone thing on its own and so I can just send that link out to students um, depending on the purpose of that video. Okay, 
Now, the third way that I use my document camera is when I'm doing one-on-one -on -one or small group conferring. Um, and let me show you how I do that. So when I'm on a call with a student, um, I usually keep the meeting off to the side. Then I'll be chatting and I'll say, oh, let me show you how to use boxes and bullets uh, to brainstorm. And I usually, when I'm doing conferring, I just have QuickTime open all the time in case I need to share this window. Okay, so I'll have that open. I have my whiteboard, which is usually what I use. That's frozen, that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> I have to restart that. Um, new movie recording. Okay, there it is again, and it has my whiteboard. So I'll be on with my students. Let's just say that um, this is my meeting here. And okay, so we can just imagine I'm on here with a student. I'm on a one-on-one -on -one conference. I'm talking, I'm talking. Or, oh, how's your writing going? Oh, okay. Well, can I show you how to, um, to, how to use boxes and bullets to organize your thinking? Oh, okay, great. So then I will share. I do present now. I want to share a window. And QuickTime will come up as an option. So now my students will see um, this, whatever I write here. So, right, we can say, oh, brainstorm. And then I'll say, oh, what sort of things do you think? And I will kind of um, write down whatever they say as they're saying it, or maybe we'll, we'll bounce ideas back and forth. And they can see what I'm writing down as I write it down. It's just a good option instead of having to be in front of a whiteboard all the time and doing the writing there. I have a small whiteboard now under the document camera that can do the same job. Another thing that I do uh, when I'm doing this sort of work with a student is when we're finished with the conference, I take a photo of whatever I put on the whiteboard and I can send it directly to the student and I can also add it to my conferring notes. So if I worked with a student about uh, comparing and contrasting characters, and I do that work on the whiteboard with them, um, and uh, I can take a photo of that, I send it directly to the student so that they have that evidence, and then I also put it in my conferring notes so that next time I talk to the student, I might say, last time we talked, we were comparing and contrasting blah, blah, blah. Um, how have you, have you tried that independently on your own? Um, can you... Show me a way that you use that strategy. Okay, so it's just another way to collect evidence. Something that I forgot to say just there is um, obviously you don't need to only have a whiteboard under the document camera. Uh, when we're looking at mentor texts or um, anything, anything you can put under, under the document camera for the students to get a better view, instead of saying, you know, let's all look at this together, you can put it under the document camera, you can zoom in if your doc cam has that kind of functionality. Um, it's just a really super helpful tool. Um, yeah, okay. So let's recap here. Three ways that you can use a document camera in virtual school are, one, you can create clips to put into your mini lesson videos uh, that would be only the full screen capturing what you were doing under the document camera. Two, you can take a screencast that will have um, the what is under the document camera in part of your screen and then your video, your face in the smaller part of the screen um, by taking a screencast video um, of your screen, obviously, okay. Uh, and then the third thing is you can use the document camera by opening a window using that camera, such as QuickTime is what I use, which is what I showed in the video. Um, and so opening that and then sharing that part of your screen with your students while you're on a meeting, a one-on-one -on -one meeting or a small group meeting. And under that document camera, you can use a whiteboard like I showed, but you can also use really anything. Um, so, yeah, those are the three ways that I'm using my document camera in virtual school. Uh, I do not think I could live without it. It is such a really helpful, versatile, amazing tool. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions about what I've said today or if, uh, you know, there's something else you have a question about. Like I said in the beginning, this video was inspired by teachers who came to me just in the hallway and said, hey, how can I do this in virtual school? And I said, oh yeah, let's, 
plug in your document camera and let's see how that looks. So um, please let me know if you have any questions. I love talking about teaching and teacher things and uh, everything. I just, I just love doing this. So let me know. Also, you can subscribe to this channel and every time I publish a new video, you will get a notification. Uh, so it'll help you stay in the loop with these teacher tech tips. Okay, have a great afternoon or morning or whenever you're watching this video. Uh, okay, that's enough. Bye.